Hi guys, Tom Hunt here in the kit room uh, and I've just returned 1.30 a.m. last night from the World Championships 2022, which this year was in the Czech Republic. Um, just, I've had loads and loads of questions from people back at home, fans wanting to know a little bit more about it. So I thought I'd try and tell the story um, on here, on my channel. Some of you might not be interested in it, but those of you that are, um, love the support. Thanks very much because we all felt like, you know, we had the whole country behind us and it was really, really awesome experience. Um, so I'm gonna take you back uh, to, you know, we've had COVID for the last few years and we've had two cancelled world championships that was planned for Poland. And we thought that was going to be a very pike heavy match. Um, then probably we're planning for Poland. Uh, we're probably, I don't know, two months out from the tournament. And last minute due to geopolitical reasons, obviously Poland is next to uh, Ukraine, uh, they pull it. They say, no, we don't think it's safe enough. We're going to cancel it. We're going to change it to the Czech Republic. We had guides sorted. We had trips sorted. We lost money on flights. We had the whole team basically going out there for a proper practice. So that really put a spanner in the works for us. Uh, and we had to kind of redirect, try and get new info. And it was really, really tricky. Uh, not many people had many contacts in, in Czech Republic. So it was tricky trying to just get any info on the venue. Anyway, a um, little bit about the team to start with. So myself and Kevin Cox are one pair. Andy uh, Dugan and Alan Robson are another pair. And Richard Haynes and Mike McGuire are the third pair. So you can select up to three pairs to take with you. That's your squad. And on any given day, you have two of those pairs fishing. One reserve pair that can swap in uh, maybe on a later day. This year, it was two days tournament practice so official practice and then it was a three-day tournament um, so five days in total for the actual champs but Kev and I we like to put the effort in so we decided to go out there a couple of weeks before um, enter a tournament the biggest tournament of the year for them called King of the Lake on the same venue which is Slappy Reservoir and um, yeah we drove our boat over there sorted out accommodation then ended up leaving our boat there uh, flew home then flew back out a week later for the actual world champ. So logistically, it was pretty interesting and pretty tricky. But um, that's what it's part of. You know, all international fishing is always going to have those sorts of factors. Um, so anyway, Kev and I went out there. We managed three days out there, two days of tournament and another practice day after that King of the Lake tournament had finished. Um, very, very interesting venue, unlike anything that we've got here in the UK. It's basically an old, deep I guess, ice age ravine valley system um, with sheer, amazingly beautiful sheer drops of cliffs coming into the water. And where those cliffs were, you would often be within spitting distance of the cliff and underneath you, you've got 100 or 150 foot of water. So very, very deep. The competition length was I think 16 or 18 miles long. So very, very long. It's about 500 meters wide, this venue. So there's an ungodly amount of water to go at, um, which makes it tricky in itself. Um, but we got out there, we had a look round. mostly locals were fishing King of the Lake. So we tried to keep an eye on where they were going for spots. And the three, well, actually four species that are present are pike, perch, zander and asp. But we pretty much ruled out uh, as part of our team plan for the world champs, the pike, there just didn't seem to be enough of them in there for them to be regular enough. And the asp, only one asp was caught. So although they were big, it didn't really come into our, our team plan. So it was really gonna come down to Xander and Perch. And during our first three days over the tournament, we caught a few undersized perch. Then we had a few around the sort of pound, pound and a quarter mark but not many. We were only catching, say, three to five perch a day. Um, and they seemed to be, there seemed to be good numbers of them there, but we were really sort of struggling to catch them. And, and at the beginning, it was very much finesse methods, sort of smallish baits on drop shot that was getting us a few perch. The Xander, a little bit more positive, up to sort of 20 or 30 gram jig heads, a little bit deeper in 30 to 50 foot range. And the perch were up a little bit shallower in sort of 20 to 25 foot. Um, but we started putting a plan together of where they were, you know, how to attack them and that type of stuff. Um, 
didn't catch loads, but we started to get a little bit familiar with the venue. And then by the time the official two day practice came round, just before the world champs, obviously we've got the whole of the team coming out. So we've got Steve Collett and Ian Crook as the manager and assistant manager. The other two boat pairs drove their boats out, came and met us out there. And we'd sort of basically just tried to give them a bit of a, you know, this is where to go. We've got a few spots. Some of them we haven't even tested yet. So we had had our work cut out for two days on the water as well. These guys were trying to get up to pace. And again, it was like in the morning we were nicking odd Xander sort of, two or three small ones or one slightly better one or, or sometimes none at all and the perch fishing again was somewhere between none or one and about five or six you know so it was a bit of a struggle and on the point system just a little bit about the FIPS head point system it's the length of the fish times by itself so if you have a 30 centimeter perch for example it's 30 times 30 so it's worth 900 points um, if you have a zander that's uh, say 50 centimetres, it's 50 by 50, which is 2,500. So the bigger the fish get, the more points they're obviously worth. And because it's squared, they're disproportionately longer, the, they're disproportionately worth more points the longer they get. So um, yeah, it's a little bit of a, a head noodle, that one, but um, it does come into play when you've got your tactics, because you think to yourself, okay, can I catch four Xander? Because that might be worth... 16 perch we basically worked worked out that one zander was worth about three or four perch um so it comes into your tactics of where are you going to spend your time what time of day you're going to fish for different species and that kind of stuff um and so rolling up to the, the the actual day one of the world championships we had um in practice we'd had sort of most of the teams that had between five and sort of eight or nine thousand points so not mega scores and i thought it was going to be quite tough so we set ourselves a target of each boat needing about ten thousand points and i we didn't know what the other teams were up to and some of those other teams like lithuania estonia um uh, ukraine like they've been out there with their full teams doing their practices for like two weeks on the water dawn till dusk um in the in the previous sort of period that's allowed and i really just felt like we hadn't spent enough time on the venue and the venue was too big to really start to get to know it we were catching pockets of fish but i never felt kind of super confident that we could really go somewhere and kind of smash it up and, and you know do well i thought we were kind of scratching around a little bit Anyway, day one comes around and our team plan was we felt the Xander fed early. And if you were going to get one, it was going to be in that first sort of two or three hours. Now, you've only got a seven hour day to fish, but we thought, OK, it might even be worth slogging it out, even if you haven't had a bite for a couple of hours, you know, because you might get two or three in a row quite quickly. So we sort of earmarked about three hours for our Xander fishing. And then thought if we can get to a free Xander and then add some perch on it, we could get across that 10,000 uh, points mark. As it turned out, we were about two hours in. Kev gets a bite, hooks a Xander, 54. So it was worth just under 3,000 points. Um, but then if I'm honest, we were kind of struggling and we got halfway through the day. We're speaking to the other boat, Andy and Alan. They haven't had a bite, they haven't had a fish, and it's not looking very good. A um, little bit of intel from the management who had been to various different spots on bridges and tried to, you know, get their binoculars out, <laughs> try and help help find us some fish. They said, yeah, there was one jetty sort of area. Head down there was a few perch. So Andy and Alan went there first of all. Um, and to cut a long story short, we rolled in after them. I think they ended up with 15 perch for about 13,000 points on the first day. And we added uh, eight perch to our one Xander in the morning and ended up with about ten and a half thousand points. So we both broke our, our goal, which was the 10,000 point mark. But then when the results come in, you suddenly realise sort of how far behind the curve you are. Um, Lithu one of the Lithuanian boats, um, who are the kind of the favourites of the world ranked number ones at the moment um they had 72 perch for sort of 60 odd thousand points um there was a few other boats that were getting up around that sort of 30 or even 40 plus perch to the boat um, and there were some good numbers of xander caught if people had just focused on xander as well um, but we ended up in 12th out of 16th place um that one spot where we nicked a few perch really kind of 
dug us out of a grave, if I'm honest, because um, it wasn't looking good up until then. But we'd managed to sort of just keep in contention um, and we, we'd beaten a few other teams and we were starting to formulate a plan because when you've been on the water, you've seen some of these other teams, seen the techniques that they're using, that type of thing, you, you're starting to get a bit of an understanding. And also, you know, the centre of the bullseye for you, we were aiming at 10,000 points it really showed that we didn't really know what the venue was capable of or, or to be competitive, what kind of scores we should have been aiming at. Um, now, 60,000 points is an unbelievable score, but they're the top ranked team in the world. They'd spent two or three weeks on the venue with their full team. And I, but I really felt just to be competitive, we needed to be a little bit more in that sort of 20 to 30,000. So way more than our 10,000. But, you know, we didn't need to be like completely breaking records or anything. So we rolled out to day two, forgot the Xander for the first few hours. We felt we wasted too much time on them. Just got straight onto the perch fishing. And um, yeah, and it was okay. You'd have little spells um, fishing basically like ned rigs um like small little five centimeter squirms type ned rigs um or or like there was a little sort of paternoster rig that you can use um little crayfish baits like anything kind of small quite delicate little bit on the drop shot occasionally and basically we got um kev and i got up to 25 perch for like twenty two thousand points and uh, andy and alan i think had 15 or 17 uh, perch for about 14 15,000 points so um we obviously improved on day one we're doing a bit of a catch-up uh still learning on the job but we felt quite happy with that and on day two we were 10th out of the 16 teams so we'd made an improvement on our 12th place um to start with however the way the scoring works italy who were below us on the first day i think they were ranked we were 12th and I think they were 13th. They'd had a fantastic day. So although we'd done quite well with 10th, um, we actually dropped a place overall once those two days are combined down to 13th. So it was like, it was a bit bittersweet for us, to be honest. We felt like we caught more fish. We'd improved on the day. We'd improved our day score. But then when it was combined, um, yeah, we'd actually dropped a place. But we felt like we were making progress, which was fantastic. Um, we then swapped out Mike Maguire and uh, Richard Haynes into the team and uh, Andy and Alan uh, uh, dropped out for the final day and Kevin and myself were still in. Um, so again, it was a perch fishing mission. Um, uh, uh, Kevin, um, uh, Mike and Richard headed out first. So the way that it is, it's done in two waves. Every team has got two boats. So you nominate them A and B. They do a random draw each morning and A will go out 10 minutes before um, the B wave. So you get one wave where you've got half of the boats going out and then they leave 10 minutes and then the second wave goes out. And it really kind of, it, it makes it a little bit safer at the start for sure. So you haven't got 30 or 32 boats like trying to take off in different directions. Um, but it also just gives you a little extra bite at the cherry that um, some of these boats that we're competing against are 200 horsepower, uh, 150, 200 horsepower. My boat is 16 foot with a 50, so it's, it can be competitive. But if you're out in the first wave, you can potentially, you know, you're only against 15 other boats. You can potentially get yourself on a spot um, that you think is half okay, even if you haven't got the best boat in the world. So it kind of makes it a little bit more interesting. Kevin and I were in the second wave on the last day going out and I felt like we were kind of chasing our tail for the whole day. Um, but Mike and Rich got on a good spot and within, I think about three or four hours, they were up to 20 perch, which was absolutely amazing. Kevin and I dropped into a new area, um, sort of had one at the beginning, but felt like it was a bit hemmed in by some of the other boats moved off uh, to meet Mike and Rich, uh, had a few near the spot that they were at as well, but we were kind of scratching. I felt like we were always a little bit behind the fish on the last day for our boat personally, but Mike and Rich absolutely smashing it. Their first spot um, gave them 20 perch, then they moved off to another spot and they had another dozen, another 12. So they ended up with 32 for just under 30,000 points on the last day, which was a really solid score. Um, and as it got harder and harder, you know, 
like the, as our scores were going up and the overall scores were coming down, uh, it actually became really interesting. Kev and I ended up with 15, I think, for about for just under 15,000 points. So nice perch, you know, anything up to sort of a pound and a half, I suppose, pound to pound and a half. Beautiful looking fish as well. It's quite sort of dark water there. Um, really interesting, you know, beautiful, vivid colours on them. Quite wild fish. Um, but we really felt as it went from day to day to day, it got a little bit harder. And the, initially the perch were able to be caught a few foot off the bottom. And the harder and harder it got, we really had to start presenting baits a lot closer to the bottom. And especially when we could find, so using tungsten, finding little rocky areas um, and fishing small little creature baits in and around the rocky areas uh, was absolutely mega. Keeping it as hard to the bottom as possible a lot of the time on that last day. And yeah, cut a long story short, uh, Mike and Rich ended up sixth. And me and Kev ended up 20th on the day. So we had 26 points combined and that gave us fourth overall, which was absolutely amazing. So out of the 16 teams, day one, we were 12th, day two, we were 10th and day three, we'd gone up to fourth. And I really felt like the team were improving. We'd cottoned on to some of the tactics. Yes, it might have been a little bit too late, but the improvements we were making, you know, we we were really positive. The team was helping each other out. We were helping each other out with all the info that we knew. We had long team meetings. All of, if you know, we were rummaging through each other's bags, trying to find small creature baits and small shads, um, helping each other out with info baits, tackle absolutely anything um, and having a brilliant time as we did it. Uh, our heads never dropped once. We stayed really focused. Um, you know, we supported each other the whole way uh, and because it is an unbelievably, uh, um, you know, pressurised situation. You know, we're on day one, when you're halfway through and you've only got one Xander on the board, that is a lot of weight on your shoulders um, and you really start to feel it. But no one threw their toys out the pram. We really stuck together as a team, which I'm super proud of the guys and the management. Um, and, it, and it was absolutely fantastic experience. That, that fourth on the day was the best score an England uh, day result has ever had. And I believe Mike and Rich's sixth out of 32 boats is the best individual boat score we've ever had. Um, we were in 13th on the last day. We then rocketed up to ninth position. And maybe there's a few of you out there thinking, cool, that's not that great, ninth out of 16. But for a brand new team, a venue we didn't know, some methods that we had to really pick up on the job, essentially. Um, it was it was a mega result um, and we were super stoked. And to get a fourth on the last day really gave us an indication of what we think this team is possible. So little recap, I suppose. If you want to be able to compete, you've, you've got to do your practice. You know, those top teams that were winning it. So Estonia won it, Lithuania were second, Hungary were third. Lithuania and uh, uh, Estonia in particular do their homework. They're absolutely class acts, uh, you know, put tons of effort in. And if we want to compete against them, we've really got to be out there for a week minimum practicing before uh, the next world champs. Uh, so practice, I think, comes into it. And you, it's the B of the bang. You've got to hit day one running. You've got to be going to spots that you're confident in, methods that you're confident in and knowing, you know, what's going to give you a winning score. And I felt like we were just off the pace, really, until sort of day, days two and three. We, you know, we didn't even really know what we were aiming at. But fantastic learning curve. Super proud of all the guys. And more importantly, thanks to you guys at home because we had so much encouragement and kind words comments um it was it was brilliant and it really g'd us all up um and last but not least i can't say thanks enough to westin and and hummingbird and minkota but westin in particular um just you know we can't do these big events without help from team members westin team members um clothing equipment all of that sort of stuff helped me out unbelievably so mega thanks to my sponsor westin um you guys honestly you're the best i love working for this company um so there you go guys that's a little story about about how our, our sort of 
days uh, went at the World Championships. Loved it. Um, found the potential of the team. We're only going to get stronger and stronger from here. And I absolutely can't wait for the next one. So thanks, guys.